In the second part, uh, or the second segment of our interview, I'd like to talk about uh, what's trending right now in the marketplace, cryptos, meme stocks, and gold. I think this will be a lot of fun. You recently participated in a debate with your colleague, Double Joshi at BCA, and the title of this debate, very interesting talk, Cryptocurrency is the Future or a Fraud? Which camp are you in, Peter? I'm in the fraud camp. <laughs> All right. I'll let you elaborate on that, Peter. <laughs> oh, I mean, listen, I mean, just... <laughs> it's not like Bitcoin just appeared uh, out of the blue. Bitcoin has been around for a while now. Uh, it was invented in 2008. Uh, the first kind of major increase in, in, in the price of Bitcoin occurred as far back as 2013. The price of Bitcoin got up to $1,000 then. Um, so this has been around for a while. And you ask yourself, okay, what's happened to Bitcoin since 2013 when it became sort of a household uh, word. And the answer is that it continues to do what it did back then. Back then, it had a lot of interest from criminal syndicates. People used mm -hmm. it on places such as Silk Road and other parts of the dark web. And if you look at transactions involving Bitcoin, to this day, the majority continue to be to finance all sorts of illicit activities. That, of mm -hmm. course, and just trading it buying and selling it. But if you actually look at how much Bitcoin is used for legitimate business purposes, the answer is very, very little. And in, in fact, some of the data that I uh, showed during this debate with my colleague revealed that fewer transactions for legitimate business purchases are being made now with Bitcoin than three years ago. You know, the internet never had a period where retail sales or online sales declined. But for Bitcoin, legitimate usage is not growing. And I think that should be worrying to anyone who's investing in this currency. Well, that's interesting, um, you know, that the data you analyze would suggest that you would think the reverse should be the case. We've had PayPal, Visa, all offering Bitcoin as forms of payment on their platform. El Salvador recently in the last two weeks announced that they would legalize Bitcoin as legal tender. One would assume that Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies at large should be shifting more towards a legitimate form of currency for everyday use. Are you saying that's not the case right now? I think technologically, Bitcoin in particular is not well suited for mm -hmm. being a true medium of exchange. Uh, it takes about half an hour to process a Bitcoin transaction. The median fee this year has been $20. It's not cheap. The Bitcoin network can process seven transactions per second compared to 25,000 for the Visa network. So I have trouble seeing how this cryptocurrency can ever be used uh, as a true medium of exchange. And if it can't be used... Let me put it to you this way. If, if, I gave, if somebody gave you one Bitcoin, you wouldn't use that to buy something with? You wouldn't go to the Tesla store and buy a car? <laughs> well, I can't. <laughs> Elon Musk won't let you me. could for a, for a small period of time. I think you missed the boat there, Peter. But I think I, I understand. I understand your point. So you're not a proponent of Bitcoin as a currency. What about Bitcoin as an asset class? So let's let's differentiate the two things here. So it can't be used, in your opinion, as a legitimate form of payment. Could you invest in it as an asset class? Should you? Um, well, we know we could. Should you? No, you, you shouldn't. Uh, I, mean, if, I mean, if Bitcoin isn't a unit of account, if it's not a medium of exchange, then why exactly should it be a store of value? <laughs> There's no intrinsic value to Bitcoin. The only value it has is the perception that others will find it valuable. But I think what's going to happen over the next year or so, and already it's happening, we saw that with, uh, with Elon's uh, flip-flop over using uh, Bitcoin, that these ESG concerns, concern about the environment. And don't forget, uh, bit, the Bitcoin mining consumes more energy than what Pakistan and its 120 million inhabitants consume. Uh, this is a very energy intensive uh, uh, currency. If these concerns about the environment, coupled with other concerns, such as the fact that uh, the whole ransomware industry would not exist without Bitcoin, if all of that leads to increased scrutiny, increased regulation, then Bitcoin is just going to disappear. And then its store of value will also disappear. Okay. Well, let's compare Bitcoin to gold. People have done that. They've called gold 
or they've called Bitcoin digital gold. Actually, some some uh, intelligent people on the internet have called gold uh, the physical form of Bitcoin. But anyway, uh, the point is a comparison has been made. Uh, going back to your argument that Bitcoin is not a store of value um, and that its only value is a, its only intrinsic value is derived from what people assign it to. Can't the same argument be applied to gold? I mean, gold doesn't generate cash flow on its own. Um, you can't model it out like a stock would. The only value that we have is given by what the market deems an ounce of gold should be worth right now. Do you see that as a fair comparison or not? Well, it's interesting. If you ever look at a picture of Bitcoin, of course, it's, Bitcoin's just a string of zeros and ones. But if you sure. ever see a picture of it, it's always like a gold coin. <laughs> with yeah, a big that's and right. coin through yeah. it. So, so, I mean, maybe Bitcoin wants to be like gold. But, but gold is special in the sense that it's been around for a long time. They aren't adding any new elements to the periodic table. Gold remains a very attractive metal for a variety of reasons, including the fact that it doesn't rust, that it's malleable, you can use it for jewelry, and people do use it for jewelry. You can use it for industrial purposes. I mean, every iPhone has a bit of gold. Uh, Apple consumes, uh, I believe it's three tons of gold per year. So gold has usages uh, that go beyond its uh, scope, beyond its ability to serve as a store of value. But most importantly, the amount of gold in the Earth's crust is not going up, whereas the number of cryptocurrencies is mushrooming like crazy. You know, we're up to about 5,000 cryptocurrencies now. We we're 1,000 two years ago. So yes, the number of Bitcoins hypothetically is capped, mm -hmm. but the number of cryptocurrencies is not capped. There's massive, I mean, we talked about hyperinflation earlier. There's massive hyperinflation in the creation of cryptocurrencies. How does that make it a safe asset? Okay. All right. So you wouldn't invest in it. You wouldn't speculate in it. Fair enough. Would you speculate in GameStop and AMC? You covered this in the recent report. Um, very interesting read. I, I was surprised you covered it. I, I, I understand the, uh, the, the research process a little bit um, at BCA. Uh, what, what, what inspired you to write about that in a, in a full report? Well, I think it's partly because uh, what's happening to AMC and GameStop is, sim is symbolic of what's happening to the broader market. There's mm -hmm. increased interest from retail investors, the amount of trading volume uh, that's due to retail investors has gone from about 10% a few years ago to 20, 30%, depending on how you measure it. And usually these sort of trends last a while. I mean, think about the late 1990s, the day trading boom there lasted about five years. So we're only one year into this latest retail mania. And this tells me that the overall bull market in mm -hmm. stocks can survive. Now, in terms of how you trade uh, meme stocks, well, you can only trade them as the momentum investor. One of the things that a report described is the high degree of momentum in these names. And so really, it's just a matter of buying them when they're going up and selling them when they're going down. In fact, a very simple trading rule that buys meme stocks when volume is up and the price is above its five-day moving average tends to generate very positive returns. Whereas mm -hmm. if you buy meme stocks when the price is below its five-year, below, sorry, its five-day average, and volume is also on the weak side, uh, prices tend to decline. So if you're a day trader, if you're a momentum investor, there are there is money to be made in this sector, no doubt about it. Uh, but for the broader stock market, I think what it means is this euphoria for stocks is still probably got some room room to run. There's an interesting paragraph you wrote. I'm just going to read it. You said that retail investors who bid up the price of stocks will generally force institutional investors to sell their holdings. This will leave institutions with excess cash on hand, cash that can be deployed in other parts of the stock market. Are you saying there's a ripple effect going on right now? There is indeed. So, so what happens is that you can say, well, you know, this just affects the meme stock phenomena is just something that affects only a few companies. But in fact, what we've seen is that as retail investors plow into these companies, then institutions sell. They, they get out at higher prices. But now these institutions have money that they have to deploy. And so they deploy them in parts of the stock market that maybe retail investors are not interested in at all. And because that money is being deployed again and again and again, 
it ends up bidding up the overall level of stocks across the whole S&P 500. Is it a stretch to say, Peter, that S&P 500 valuations uh, or elevations, should I say, uh, are due partly in f- to the retail euphoria that we've seen in the past six months? It's partly due to it, but, but, I, but I think the bigger, the bigger issue right. is that you have euphoria about the end of yeah. the pandemic. Uh, and you have a lot of fiscal support. You have a lot of monetary support. That's really what's driving prices okay, so, higher. So bottom line, would you advise your clients to speculate in either of those things we talked about? Meme stocks, cryptocurrencies, none of the above? Well, I mean, if you're, if you're a kind of a more conservative long-term investor, I think the answer is no. Uh, and to the extent that you might want to speculate, you probably want to speculate on the short side. Yeah. rather than the long side so okay. so uh all right so there are ways of going short these the, these these meme stocks without hurting yourself uh you can do it conservatively um if you scale positions properly and certainly you can go short bitcoin here in canada we have etfs where you can actually go short bitcoin there's an inverse bitcoin etf and uh and uh final question gold how should people use gold in their portfolio I want to get your take. I've heard many things. Well, I think I, mean, I think we're in an environment now where gold will probably be able to do reasonably well, not because inflation is going sky high. We discussed that, and mm-hmm. and, and I don't think that's going to happen. But we are in an environment where real interest rates are very low. That typically mm-hmm. is good for gold. We're in an environment where the dollar has been weakening. That's good for gold. And we're in an environment where perhaps some of the luster that uh, cryptocurrencies have enjoyed will fade. And one of the reasons that gold has been on the weak side this year is because a lot of money has gone from gold into cryptos. Well, it could go back into gold if uh, the if the infatuation that so many people have with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, begins to diminish. Do you think we could ever retest uh, the highs we saw last year of, uh, of August 20, $2,000? between $2,000 to $2,100 an ounce. Is that uh, likely for the foreseeable future? I think it's definitely a possibility. Uh, For me, where I become much more interested in gold as a long-term investor is if in a couple of years, we still have very low interest rates and, and continued large budget deficit. And at that point, the unemployment rate has fallen below where it was prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. If we end up in that sort of a situation, then at that point, sure, inflation becomes more of a risk and owning gold is an attractive hedge against inflation.